2 Thessalonians opens in typical Pauline fashion with a pronouncement of grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Always listed in this order, we should be reminded there's no pathway to true and lasting peace that doesn't first begin through the gates of God's amazing grace. In verse 3, Paul tells of constant thanksgiving he and his companions offer on behalf of these beloved saints in Thessalonica. He mentions their faith, as he did in his first epistle, but tells here of it being greatly enlarged. Similarly, the report of their love for one another is that it's grown greater and greater. What wonderful news and certainly a cause for thanksgiving. One omission in this greeting that could bear some significance is that of the steadfast hope mentioned in Paul's first letter as being reported in their midst. Is there a reason their hope is not mentioned here? Could it be tied to their recent consternation over the false messages they'd received stating that the day of the Lord had come and that they were entering the tribulation? Well, we cannot be certain that is the reason why this hope is not mentioned in this greeting. We can be sure of the great comfort and peace available as one holds fast to that blessed hope of our Savior's soon return for His church. Continuing his praise for these saints in verse 4, Paul commends them for their testimony of perseverance in the midst of persecution and affliction. So beautiful was this endurance, Paul spoke proudly of them to the other churches. Their patience in the face of suffering had not gone unnoticed. In verse 5, Paul comforts them with the certainty of God's judgment. He declares that they will be found worthy of the kingdom of God for which they were suffering. What an amazing consideration that within the scope of God's righteous judgment, we who endure will be found worthy of the kingdom of God. Now one must be clear, we will never be found worthy because of our own performance, but only because we are His purchase. For those not covered in Christ, specifically mentioned here those who persecuted the Thessalonians for their belief in Christ, the judgment of God will be a terrible thing. They will receive affliction, but it will be much more complete than the one they inflicted on those they persecuted. And worse, it will be completely final. So here in this encouragement regarding God's judgment, we see a proclamation of punishment to the afflictors and relief for the afflicted. Now in the latter half of verse 7, Paul speaks on the timing of this judgment and pairs it with the revelation of our Lord Jesus from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. We will learn more regarding the timing in chapter 2, but for now be clear this event where Christ is revealed with the saints and the angels is after the rapture and after the seven year tribulation. Do not miss in verse 8 the statement that these people being punished are those who did not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Here we see a true encounter with the gospel must be met with a life that gladly submits itself to the glorious message of new life in Christ. These are the people who love Jesus and want to be with him and to be like him. Listen to how Jesus defined eternal life in John 17, 3. This is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Back to the passage at hand, in verse 9 we read of these gospel rejectors receiving their eternal punishment of being away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. Their tragic end is contrasted with the glory and honor we will have of being with Him when He comes to be glorified and marveled at among all who have believed. With this glorious ending in mind, which is really more of a glorious beginning, Paul prays for the Thessalonians in verse 11, that our God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in Him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They would be found worthy as they were found in Christ, and there in Christ so also would every desire and every need be met. And in the end, Christ will be glorified in his saints and we in him. All of this only by the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. 
Thank you for watching this latest offering from Honeycomb Summaries. We pray these five-minute chapter overviews are a blessing and serve to help you grow closer to God. Please take time to go back through and read and study each chapter for yourself. If you're here and don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and aren't assured of the hope of heaven, please don't put off that important decision another day. For more information, search our channel for a video called Three Minutes That Could Change Your Life. Please share this video with anyone who might like to learn more about what God has to say in His Word. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified as new content is released. Thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you.